season opening football press conference with head coach Scott Satterfield. We'll, uh, we'll start with uh, Coach Satterfield here, and then uh, when he's done, we'll have defensive coordinator Tyson Veit and offensive coordinator Brad Glenn. Coach, could you start us off with an opening statement, please? Yep. Yeah, man. Shoot. Awesome to be back in here with you guys. That means we're getting ready to get started, and uh, you know, we're fired up about this season. We, uh, we've had a great offseason, I think, you know, as far as going all the way back to January, and then, you know, added some, some lot of players, quite honestly, and then this summer as well. Um, the guys have worked extremely hard. And, you know, obviously, when you're looking at our team this year, we talked a little bit about this in media days. I mean, we have, you know, 47 new scholarship players since December. So, you know, that's a lot. I mean, it's over 50% of your scholarship players are new. Um, I think our guys have done a really good job of being connected. That's one of the things we focused on in the spring and this summer, has been a connected football team, um, working on the discipline aspect of it, holding each other accountable. Um, in this off season, trying to make it as hard as possible so that we can face adversity um, in the off season, not necessarily in the game. So hopefully the games will be more, much more easier for our, us and our team. And that's, that's kind of be our focus in camp. You know, it should be a, it's going to be a difficult camp as far as you know putting a lot of pressure on our guys, um, putting them in adverse situations, seeing how they're going to react, um, finding out who our guys are. I mean, that's what this, these especially these first two weeks of camp are finding out. You know, where guys are going to be playing, uh, what roles our guys are going to have, how can they help us go out and be successful. And um, that's that's what it's going to be all about um, in coming together as a football team. And, you know, we go to higher ground on Saturday. First practice is Sunday at higher ground. Our first three practices will be here at Denver, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, so, you know, got everything scheduled out and ready to go. I do want to mention um, we, we have had a really successful, healthy offseason. Um, do want to mention one guy, Micah Coleman, will be out this season. Um, had a lower body body injury um, while training this summer a few weeks ago, and um, he will not be able to play. Uh, since Sarah Lewis was this spring that, that had an ACL that we had talked about, so he, he's obviously out. But um, everybody else is is back and ready to go. I know you know Corleone's a big talking point for everybody, and obviously one of our great leaders. And Corleone's been he's back to training. Uh, working with our team, you know, working with our doctors, and then he seems to be in great shape um, as far as mentally um, and is ready to go. And, and hopefully uh, we're very optimistic about him and in, in, in his future here as a Bearcat. We'll open up for questions. Defensively, is this unlike anything you've ever seen because there is so much unknown in terms of where guys are going to slot and, and how exciting is that going into camp? Because there is apparent, it would seem on the surface, a lot of jobs up for grabs. A lot of jobs up for grab, grabs, you know, you, you there, and it's a new, the new defense as well, right? So we're looking at, a, you know, a new scheme, um, a lot of new players, and there's been great competition on that side of the ball, when I, you know, really at, at all levels. When you think about, I think about the safeties, I think about the corners, I think about all three linebacker positions. Um, I think about the defensive line where we got a lot of bodies there as well. So um, a lot of moving parts, um, a lot of new players. It's going to be some great competition. And, you know, and really and that's what I'm talking about. These first few weeks is really kind of sorting all that out. Like who's, you know, who's going to be playing the star position, which is our middle safety. You know, who's going to be playing the field strong safety. I mean, so um, a lot of good, good players uh, in those positions. And um, so it'll be some great competition. Um, Samson Grader. The quarterback position has been a question. So, like, do you know who's going to be like the quarterback or who's going to be the leader of the team? No, I mean we're we're still competing at that position, like we are at every position. I, you know, I think about shoot, you look at the offensive line. We got all five starters back, but man, this, they're all competing. I feel like we got at least nine guys that can go out and play at the offensive line position. So every each and every day, they're going to be making themselves better. I think the quarterback position will be very similar in that. Um, you know, we got, you know, Lick to who's back, who's played a lot for us last year. And then you got a, a true freshman in Samaj and then Brendan who, who came in in January. So I think that's a great competition right there. They've really been um, competing hard against each other at the same time, trying to help each other. And I think that's very healthy in their relationships in that room. You know, as we all know, you better have at least uh, two or three guys ready to go at that position. And so I feel very fortunate, particularly in this day and, and age in, in college football where so many quarterbacks have moved around for us to have, you know, I feel like three solid guys at that position. Keegan, then Scott. 
with Coleman being out is the plan a medical red shirt and then next up after him who's going to slot in at that yeah I mean you know I think I think certainly we'll try to get that year back you know with, with that injury um you know it's, it's tough I mean you know I got Eric Phillips obviously that that's that's their defensive end um uh, Varner you know Rob Jackson um you know I I, I do think you know Marquise Park West Parker's a freshman I think may have a shot there. Um, you know, I think he's coming in and look very well or very good. Um, you know, so I think we're just going to be by committee there, you know, and start rotating guys. And I, I feel like on defense line anyway, we, we got to play a lot of players at D-line. Like, we got to rotate. Um, you know, even though a guy like, you know, like Corley Owen, who's you know, one of the better in the country, we still got to rotate him. Like, we got to keep those guys fresh up front. I, I felt like last year, particularly on defense, at, at all levels, we, we got wore down, particularly by the end of the year. We didn't have the depth we needed. Uh, we couldn't rotate like we needed. I mean, Jack Dingle was, you know, beat all to hell the last six games, you know. So hopefully now we got some guys that we can rotate in that spot. So it'll be the same thing, I, I feel like, at, at all three levels in the defense. And I do feel like we really helped ourselves this all season with depth, at, at really at all three levels. You got a slew of new defensive backs in. Uh, they've all played at different places, had some success at different places. Uh, how difficult is it to, to gel uh, a, a bunch of eyes into weeds? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's, that's like I mentioned earlier, being connected football team is what we've worked on throughout the spring and summer. And I, man, it, these guys are, I've done a great job of competing with each other at the same time trying to build each other up. And I think there's been a lot of positive, positive messages coming from our guys. Um, we intentionally this off season did, did our crews and within the crews, there were six of crews. You know, we have every position that is on a crew. And so they all get to know each other a lot better, um, you know, and the competition's there. So it's, uh, I do think too, that, that's part of camp. I mean, you know, everybody's got to find out what their role is going to be. You know, am I going to be a starter? Am I going to be a guy that's going to come off the bench, but I'm still going to get 30, 35 snaps. I mean, so those are the type of things we got to work out over here the next few weeks. Marshall, then Chad. You brought up in your opening statement uh, adversity mm -hmm. and trying to prepare yourself through that forest so you're ready for the regular season. What did you learn from last year, first year here, first year in the Big 12, that the, the adversity you can actually prepare for in training camp heading into the season? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, you, you don't really truly know how somebody's going to react until they face adversity. <laughs> and so what we try to create through, through our workouts, through practice sessions, um, is situations where they're going to get, you know, in, in that adversity where, where, you know, you may, you may, you know, put a ball down and, and call something and run a play where you think you got a first down as an offense, but then we'll say, nope, there was a penalty. We're backing you up 15 yards. Now you got to get it again. And I want to see, hey, is, are they hanging their heads or they say, all right, let's freaking go. And so we try to create those type of situations in practice um, in this off season, spring practice. Um, you know, and, and make it as hard as you can possibly make it where you feel like, like the other day, we were running half gassers. And, uh, you know, a guy, they didn't make their time. So, hey, you're right back up again. How are you going to react? And you got to make it at a certain time. So are you going to you know, hang your head, you're going to start, you know, pointing fingers, or are you going to get back on the line and run it again? Um, and those are the things we want to see. And, you know, our guys this summer have done a great job with that. And I feel like we're in a much better place. And so much things, so many things we learned from last year, obviously. There's a lot of close games and we didn't win. And it comes down to only a few plays. And, and to me, discipline was a big part of that. We were not very disciplined in our assignment um, or, and or, um, you know, getting penalties, turning the ball over, those type of things. Uh, we just worked a you know, great deal this offseason. How do you make discipline a part of your program, though? Well, because, you, you, you know, if, if you have to lift at 6.30 in the morning, we're telling our guys you have to be in our building before 6 to get you something to eat. And you do this, and you just do this for six months. We've been doing that, you know. And if you're not, we had we had some guys that were one minute late. Well, the the other players kicked them out of the weight room. Like you were one minute late. We're not dealing with that this year. So you're going to work out on Saturday morning since you missed this lift on Wednesday, for example. And it's coming from the players, and I, that's when it, uh, this whole offseason is just so refreshing to see as a coach to see your your team, your team members. Um, holding each other accountable. And I think that's, that's huge. You should see a big difference this year for that. Chad, then uh, Charlie. The running game was up to your standard, I would think, yep. a season ago, but the passing game didn't quite get mm -hmm. there. Xavier Henderson is back on the outside. Competition in the slot, competition at number two, competition, competition at tight end. Where are you at going into camp, do you think, in terms of the <laughs> pass catching and 
being able to move the ball through the air? Well, I, I think we have, you know, I think we have some quality individuals out there at wide receiver this year, some new names, um, Tyron Smith, Tony Johnson, uh, Jamoy Mays, or some guys I feel like come in that can do some really good things. Guys that were on our team, um, Aaron Turner, uh, Sterling, Burkhalter, I think, I think both of those guys had outstanding springs that will give us some great depth. Barry Jackson is as talented as any of them. Um, you know, and of course you got Prater. I mean, uh, shoot, Kale Woodburn's probably maybe the fastest kid on our team. We saw that in the spring. I think he had a nice catch in the spring game. Um, he's really improved himself, um, and I think, so he'll give you something different. I just think we got a good overall mix of guys, um, depth-wise, way more than last year. Um, you know, but we all know um, it comes down to quarterbacks making the, making the throws. And, you know, we had guys open last year. We, did, we didn't finish the, the plays on, on several of those guys. You know, if you hit some of those throughout a 12-game season, if you hit seven or eight of those balls down the field, I mean, that, your passing game is going to look a lot different. You know, and I think, um, and it certainly should, to me, should open up the run game a little bit more. I mean, our, we were playing teams last year, they're packing the box up and we're still able to run the football. It speaks well for our offensive line um, in, in, our, in our backs. But um, hopefully this year we'll be able to push the ball down the field more. I mean, I, if we feel good about our running game, we do have to push the ball down the field more in the throw game and connect on those deep balls uh, and get some more big plays. To me, we were lacking in the big play capabilities last year offensively. We moved the ball and we had yards but we didn't score the touchdowns we needed. And I, I think it was the big plays that we just didn't get. And, um, you know, it's been an emphasis all season. Hope we'll be able to hit those this year. Alex, Charlie, Joe. You guys are still searching for your first Big 12 win, Big 12 win at home. Have you guys talked about defending home field, making Nippers Stadium a tough place for opposing teams to come in? And how much have you talked about that this off season? Yeah, I mean, our very first meeting this summer, that was that's one of our goal is defend Nip. I mean, we have to. I mean, that's, you know, we, we want to be successful in this league. I mean, you have to win at home. This, this has to be a what, such a great home field advantage for us. We have, have outstanding fans, our student body that come out. They're incredible. Um, it is a, it should definitely be a home field advantage, and we have to take advantage of that. And so that's the number one goal. We've talked about it all summer. You know, you know, you know, you know we play Miami again this year. We have to go win that game. It's not here. But, but that's a huge game, we all know. And um, we've had players throughout the summer stand up and talk about what it means to them to defend Nip and to, and to get the bell back. I mean, and so we, you know, every week we've had a player and or coach get up and speak to the whole group. And so it's, it's on everybody's mind. Um, you know, it's a huge emphasis for us um, and, and uh, uh, you know, one, of our, one of our big goals. Sounded like a great update on Dante. Do you anticipate him practicing early in camp or any other details on the timeline here? Yeah, I mean, we just take it one day at a time with Dante, you know, and our, our training staff does an outstanding job in, in handling that. But he is, you know, this, the last probably month, has been training with our team, working out, lifting, running, doing all those things. Um, you know, he certainly will be out to practice with our guys. We'll, we'll see how much he can do as we, as we work through camp, I think. Um, you know, part of, of him is, you know, getting getting him back in shape. I mean, he, you know, he missed, what, two or three weeks there in the summertime. So hopefully getting him back in the best shape that he can possibly be in. And then whatever our doctors and trainers allow him to be able to do, then that's what we'll do. Um, so we're certainly just leaning on them and, you know, we'll take it day by day. When preseason polls come out, I'm sure every coach digests them differently. Do you care that you're picked 14th? Out of 16 teams, do you use that with your group? No, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, preseason polls are, I don't even know how anybody picks a preseason poll. We got, we just mentioned 47 new scholarship players. I mean, how did anybody really know? Um, I think, um, you know, they base it off of the previous year, usually. And so, you know, we didn't have a great year last year. So that's probably deserve it to be where we picked, you know. It doesn't really matter. We, 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 we have had a, a, a great focus this off season of, of being the best we can possibly be um, and being a connected football team. And if we continue that and, and live up to the standard that our players have set and our coaches have set, then we feel like we're going to be uh, a very solid football team and a team that'll be hard to beat. And that's, that's what we're focusing on as we move forward throughout this camp. You brought up uh, big plays, a lot of time big plays and get you into the red zone. How do you guys plan on working through camp to be more efficient in the red zone mm -hmm. this coming season? Yeah, I mean, we worked on, you know, every day in the spring practice and 15 practices, so we're every day working on that. And, 
Um, this this all season, you know, looked at a lot of different teams and studied red zone play, uh, how we can become better. You know, it ultimately comes down to play playmakers and who who do we need to get the ball to in those scenarios, those situations. Um, you know, but I do think you know if you can score from you know outside the red, that's going to help help your scoring. Um, therefore, I, I think once you get down in there, you know, you should be better at scoring. I, I you know I think you know. We got to do a much better job of, of just getting the ball in the end zone. We don't we don't want to settle for field goals. Um, we all have heard and seen what happened last year. I mean, we, we want a different outcome. And so um, just we're, we'll continue to work on it in fall camp. It'll be a big emphasis uh, off, offensively and, and defensively in, in the red. Dan and Keegan. What caught your eye, <clears throat> excuse me, when you first started watching Soresby's Indiana tape? Uh, competitive spirit is probably the first thing. You know, when you, you turn that tape on, I mean, he's, you know, obviously making some great throws, but then he's, he's running hard. He's trying to run over people and um, trying to fight for extra yards. I mean, I, that really caught my eye, and I thought, man, this kid is a competitor. That just tells you he's a competitor. Um, you know, and then once you get to, you know, we started talking to him, got to know him a little bit more. And, um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a very, um, you know, team-oriented player coming from a quarterback position, which I really like. I mean, he really just fell in here and, um, you know, trying to do the best he can for his teammates and everybody around him, and you know, but he, but he's got a good release. He's got a he's got a good arm. He's he's changed his body tremendously. It's amazing. He came in around 241 or so, right in there. Now he's right around 228. Um, you know, he's he's running better, uh, looking good. So, um, you know, I think um, you know he's he's a he should be a, a really good quarterback. I mean, one that um, you know we'll see how this competition works out here over the next few weeks. Keegan and Chad. This is a new era of technology in college football with the inner communication, the tablets. Yep. Do you see that as a benefit or advantage for the offense or the defense? And kind of what have the plans been put in place for that? Yeah, no, I'm excited about that. You know, number, really two things. Number one, the communication that we're going to have uh, from coach to player. Um, and we're certainly, we'll, you know, like most teams, put that on the quarterback so they'll be able to hear, you know, what we're saying. Um, that defensively, you know, whether it be a, a linebacker or a safety, we'll put that on there. But I think that's awesome, all right? But then being able to come back off the sideline after your series and go through the plays is going to be incredible. And I do think it will benefit the offense more. And, um, you know, but I do – it'll benefit the defense, defense as well. But uh, the offense to be able to see exactly how the defense is lining up for, the, for this game, you know, because sometimes defense is that, man – what we worked on all week, maybe they changed, they tweaked some stuff. All right, after the first two or two series, you come back and you say, all right, look, the safety's doing this or the D-line's doing this. So now you can really combat that, and that's going to be incredible. Um, so we are going to work that this this camp. You know, we're going to have um, at least two scrimmages where we're going to work the tech, technology. Um, you know, our first major scrimmage uh, here, um, you know, I think maybe 10 practices in, we'll use it. Um, you know, I think you get 18 iPads. And so now, how do you split that up, offensive, defense, and up in the box? And so, um, we got to have a great plan for that when the guys come off the field. Last and, couple. And, and, but I do think uh, I do think it's going to be awesome. I mean, I, I'm excited for it, and uh, it'll be, it'll certainly uh, benefit all of us. You lost uh, two tight ends that had some production. You gained several decent dudes. Mm -hmm. Are you better in that room? Oh yeah, I think so. We're a lot better in that room, and. Um, you know, the guys that we brought in, um, we're fired up about them. We, we feel like they can be outstanding tight ends. The two freshmen that we brought in, love those those two freshmen that we brought in that got here in January. Uh, that is a that is probably the most improved position on the football team is the tight end room. And, you know, we, we added size. We added guys that can catch. Um, we added a lot of depth. You know, we love to use the tight ends. You know, we've – you know, every every snap you're going to see a tight end on the field and sometimes you're going to see two and other times you're going to see three. And we got to be able to utilize those those bodies right there. They'll also really help special team wise as well. So yeah, we're excited about that room. Okay. With the turnover and forty seven new guys, it's usually very difficult for freshmen to get on the field because there's mm -hmm. talent stacked ahead of them. We saw some of these guys in the spring flash and make an impression. Is this maybe going to be an opportunity for some of those talented young guys to advance faster than normal? I, I think so. I mean, first of all, I think Zach. Uh, Grant, our you know GM, did a great job evaluating our coaches recruiting this class. This is an outstanding freshman class. Um, number one, hot quality individuals, and number two, they can play. You know, the, the 
10 guys we brought in, in in the spring, they all flashed, like all of them. I'm like, and then so now you're, you're already seeing improvement this summer from those guys because I haven't been here in the spring. They're well, probably well ahead of the other guys that showed up this summer, the other freshmen. And, but since, since they've been here two months, I mean, I've started to see some of those guys starting to flash. So we're really excited about some of these freshmen. There'll be some of those guys playing for us. There's no question about it. Um, obviously, you know, there's a lot of competition going on, a lot of depth, but once this thing starts working itself out, I mean, I, I, I firmly believe that we'll see several of those freshmen that'll be in the mix and playing for us. <clears throat> Any other questions? Thank you, Coach. All right, thanks, guys. Let's go. Defensive coordinator Tyson.